afraid I've been excavating this place. We're gonna look up in here. I've been reaching up in here with my shovel. You can see him peeling this stuff back. And there's flint in every screen. Look at how deep this goes up in here. Look at the fired rock. Come, look at that hole going up in there. I mean, that is like a tunnel that I could crawl back in hundreds of yards, it looks like. And all of this stuff's blown out of there. And it's just full of ancient treasure. And I find just a smoker in here in this one, folks. Again, two days in a row. All right, enjoy. <laughs> About an hour and a half in, I'm back to this place. It's right where I found a Stringtown Lancelot, um, AKA Eastern Scots Bluff, right here. What I'm doing, I'm back up in this beaver den. All this dirt that they've shoveled out, clawed out of the bank, dug out, whatever you want to call it, is right in here. And I'm just, I brought a little short handled shovel so I can maneuver it in here. And I'm just digging this stuff out, putting it in my screen. Go down and see what's in it. This is just like a test screen from way up in here. See if there's anything good up in here. I'll screen this down after I get it. Take me a few minutes to get this filled. I'll screen it down here in a minute. But it just filled up. I want to get all the stuff. There could be a point in there with dirt stuck on it. And you'd this ain't like seeing the marbles. You can miss little tiny artifacts easy. You get a screen, everything. All of it. Or you'll miss stuff. I'll get this out of the water and I'll screen it down low. There's evidence of ancient man in this. It's worth sifting all of it. Especially after, you know, I found a string town lance in here in my last trip. Fired rock right there, big chunk. You want to get all that out. I kind of turn this up with my hands. And even when it's hot, you want to wear gloves. There's toxins in every stream and in the mud that I'm digging is where it's at. You even want to wear hip wages, believe me. And look at that big piece of fired rock with holes all in it. That's not an artifact, it's just a natural rock. But look at all this fired rock, man. Yep, right there's a flake of black. That's evidence of ancient man right there. Well, I don't even know what to say, man. I got a nice piece. And I like this stuff as good as points because I'm gonna be telling a story in this place right out of a out of a beaver den right up there. I got the lance, I got lots of flakes, I got them tips, you saw the stuff. I'll put the video where I first found this place in my last video up at the left. You can watch it. I got that point, now look at this. Look at the screens, it's important to, you know, this this cracked up rock, you, you're going to be seeing it 100% of the time if you're doing what I'm doing on the Ohio River or any place. This is what you're looking for tumbling out of the bank on a lake that is seeing water erosion. Any place that's seeing water erosion. Most streams they are fast running and when the stuff comes out of the bank it ain't concentrated on the shore like this. If you're in a free flowing creek that blows out, the stuff's getting scattered. You can find this though in the bank where it's coming out and dig into the bank before it gets into the water. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But all the stuff I'm finding is probably associated here. And here's an end scraper. You can see it, tell what it is because of the shape of it. It looks like kind of like a boot heel, but man, this is a nice one. And it probably goes right along with that point. Look at the inclusion in this. It's translucent like and it looks even fluted look at that big oh man it's jewel grade material and look i'll put up next how this would have been hafted and used as a tool these could definitely be used as woodworking tools um they almost work like a chisel if you put them in a wood handle and use a billet with it but they you see all of them have that lip they're made like off a template flint napping template um you can see how that would catch a hide Man, that is just sick. Look at that material. I'd say that's a fossil inclusion of some time, like some kind of coral going into gray. That is a beauty to go with that. 
Now I got a tool to go with the lance. All right, here we go. There's hard stone pieces that are all fired. Look at all the fired rock in the screens. There's a little tiny flake. Here's a flake. Look at this. I saw more, but there's an artifact. Here's one. This is what you want to be seeing. It's textbook. There's a little sliver. But look here. Look at this colorful little blade. Man, some kind of little tool. Another little tool. Look at the material. This stuff could all be associated with the lance. I'd say it very well is. Look at that, that's nice. I'll keep looking. If I can find this. Um, I got a point, I think I do. And this is right up in and out of that, way up in it. I'll climb up in it before I go. Yeah, let's see, I s it's a corner notch or something, I think. It's new lens, you see it? Do it, you know where I'm at, there's, this is definitely going to be a multicultural site. I just hope most of the stuff's old. But right here it is. This is all I saw. Kind of looks pentagonalish. I don't know. Oh my God, that's nicer than expected. That's a Kirk. Oh, folks. I mean, holy crap. Oh, that's a smoking point. That's a Kirk corner notch. Real ground base. Oh, folks. That is beautiful. And a lance out of here. Oh, Kirk's and lances. Oh, folks. This is a good place. Right up. All right. In the last video, I found a Stringtown lance. Um, you know, it overlaps in time with the Kirk stuff. So I found... Two basically 9,000 year old pieces here and you can see look at the similarities even there between these points it's what it is and it's just a classic Kirk for this area and there's string towns with it this is a good sight to say the least sorry I'm a little bit chilly it's hard to hold this steady it's cold today kind of I'm wet too tired sore but that's a pretty nice point. And this is what it is, Kirk Corner Notch, early to middle arcade, 9,000 to 6,000. We'll pause this and read it here. There'll be some nice stuff come off this site. And this is the book I'm using, Over Street Guide to Indian Airheads. You can get them on Amazon. But another successful trip, folks. Wow. Later. I'm scooping this stuff off the base clay and cleaning it off, see? Just leaving nothing. And. A rock up in there is another artifact. I'd rake one of these out, pried one off the base clay there. This is another nutter. Nutting is dangerous. This is a nice one. Look at that. All oh, right. You know, my opinion on these priming am antler billets for the flint mapping process. Finally, there's artifacts everywhere. Right out. Oh, this is probably another lance. Folks, I am just on it. I mean, this, I don't even know what to say. This is good stuff. You see it? It's jewel grade material right here. It's some kind of stem thing, and there's a little, it's a little cruder, but that don't mean nothing. That's beautiful material. I'd say that's some kind of you know, early archaic transitional lance to see the other stuff, a Kirk, a classic Stringtown lance. Now this, that looks like it has some age too. It's got basal thinning. Huh. Nice material. It's a decent find. The last screen, here's a base of another stem lance. So you can see the edge of it right here. Green translucent material, just about like that last one. There's another string town. Hmm. Man, folks, this is a good sight. I'm getting 
getting closer to the shores of West Virginia, man, the river's wide here. It takes me a few minutes to get across. I'm just going at a slow pace though. But you can see the trees are not bare anymore. I saw a few yesterday that almost had full leaves on them. We've been getting some cold nights here in the last week, you know, where it's got down right around freezing, like 30 degrees, 32 at night. But it's kind of chilly now. I got on a sweatshirt, but I'd say it's 45 or 50 maybe. But I'm gonna look around in here. I found some points right there in front of me, but this last high water put three foot of mud on it. It was washing out. It's gonna take till the end of the summer to wash back out again. Unless I dig all the mud off, which it isn't worth it. But I got a maybe. You can see how good this looks. That's cracked up red rock. See it right here. Looking down through here, there's a little flake right here. A finishing flake of Kashatan chert. I don't know if that's a flake or not. Yeah, it is. Um, where's it at? Right here. See this? It might just be a flake, but it's airhead shaped. That was, it might be a uniface triangle. Nah, it's just a flake. But you get the picture of what I'm doing here. I'm surface hunting a little bit. See, here's another little tiny flake of chert from the manufacturer of an ancient artifact. See, there could just be a real scorcher laying out here anywhere or nothing. I might just find flakes. You just gotta keep them. I'll get back. I picked up multiple flakes right through this area. This is going to be a good place to sift. Look at some of this stuff. That's beautiful. That's a big flake from the manufacturer of something. I'm going to do a few screens in here before I get to another place to dig where I was going to dig. See, there's another flake right there. Do something. This is what I do. Hear that? There's only a thin layer of gravel and stuff in here, and I picked up like 10 flakes of flint in here. I'm hitting the base right there. I pushed the shovel. This, this ground has all been, this is all eroded material out of here 15,000 years of, of time. Easily goes back that far here. Um, this is like at the bottom of a sleece box on a gold operation. This is the concentrates of all the stone, all the material that's still left in this bank is right here laying after this high water. There's not much current in this river, so it doesn't move like it would in a creek that gets blown out. It all lays right here. So if there's a cache of points that came out right in here, I'll find 90% of them within 10 yards of either side of where they come out. But let me fill up this screen. You see what I'm doing? And we will sift it down and see how many screens are in it or how many pieces of flint are in it. This is what I do. These are called test screens. I do these along places and the places with 10 or 15 flakes of flint in my screen. That's where I stop and sift and I take every flake I find so I know when I'm on places that have just washed out and I sift all the material if I'm seeing flakes and see what was in the bank. It's like putting together an ancient jigsaw puzzle, basically. I can see what's here, who lived here, by the artifacts I find in my screen. It's what we're shooting for. Hopefully I can find something. Later. There's stuff here. I can sift here and find artifacts. If I stay here like an eight hour day, I got videos. Here's a flake right there, a little flake and flake, and right here's a nice piece of Indian pottery. I'll take that, sit this up here. Get put it in the boat in a second. Look at this. This is a classic big piece of ancient fire rock. See how it's all cracked and red? That was heated in an ancient fire and it's falling out of the bank. I'll get back. Same screen. Right there's another real thick. That's probably a Dina pottery. That's a real thick piece. I'll show it to you at the end of the video. Cleaned up. But there's just there's a lot of stuff here. Little finishing flakes. And pottery in the screens. I'm, I might find something here if I stay just a few more minutes. I'll see. I want to go dig on that new site I found. Look at that. You see, so all the deeper the stuff is, there's the base. I'm just scooping this stuff off. I already got a point. It's got a tip, Nick, but man, it looks like a cold. Well, it might not. I don't know what this is. 
Yeah, it has a tip, Nick, but oh, man. Holy crap, this would have been nice. It's just got the tip going, and it's like a real weird Madison point. That's so cool, honestly, that it's worthy of putting the tip on that restoring it. Look at how that's resharpened. It's starting to be resharpened into a drill, but it's a Madison point. That's one of the coolest ones I've ever seen with just how the base is, they left the base and the years on the base. Oh, that's a shame. That's a true heartbreaker. Imagine how nice that would have been with a tip on it. It would have been a scorcher. Hopefully, I, I'll, I'm just gonna stay here another little bit. These screens look great, you know? It's hard to tell what else is here under this high bank too. I'm a, I could find a Clovis point here below a bank like this. Everything that's here, it's coming out. Later. Look here, I'm outside. This is where Squirrel Man rides up on my shoulder. I can just walk around and he'll be up here. Get back up here. He's you on you on the shoulder. He's going down. Hold on. Look here. This is my pet squirrel for you newbies. Most of you are familiar with this old boy. Hey. Look at him. Well, you're not going in the woods. You're domesticated. Look at him. You got stuff all over you. Get over here. I'll bring him out so he can see he's walking. He's moving both of his back legs. He's still dragging one kind of, but it's getting stronger. This is really helping him out here. Look at him. What are you doing? Are you sniffing? He hears that. All right, well, I'm heading to the river. I'll put this, these clips at the end. Look here. You playing? You playing? <laughs> he sniffs everything like a little dog. Tell him you're just like a little dog. You're like a little dog. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Here's some bonus clips. He's found something he likes right there. What are you eating? You eating greens, he's finding all kinds of stuff to sniff. Look at him. Look at this boy. You outside digging. <laughs> what a dandy. Look at him. What? Look here. <laughs>